I know the word nerd. Over the years, I have heard it used as a pejorative, mostly by kids. I had had my feelings hurt by people using the word to make fun of me on more than one occasion. And while people called me a nerd, they were both telling the truth about me and paying me a compliment, even if I didn't know it at the time. I have always been fond of reading. When I first learned how to read, it was amazing to me how many worlds I could enter by just turning pages. I could learn whatever I wanted by just opening a book and allowing it to tell me what I wanted to know. Sometimes, during recess, I would sit in the library and read. It wasn't that I didn't have friends, it was just that I enjoyed the serenity of being in a quiet place where I could escape for a little while into a place of my choosing. I enjoyed school, for the most part. I loved to learn, and reading was a big part of that. I learned early on that you could learn almost anything by reading about it. Another bonus of reading when I was little was that it allowed me to escape from my baby sister, Ernesto. It wasn't that I didn't love my sister. I did, and still do. It was just that she didn't become fun or interesting until she started to walk. And after she started walking, Ernesto never left me alone. Reading was an excellent way of evading Ernesto. I could close my door and read about whatever I wanted. I read about faraway places and different people. I learned about different periods of time. I read fiction. I read nonfiction. I read my own books, and I read books that belonged to my parents. Mom and Dad even created a little library for me of books that had been theirs when they were younger. My favorite nonfiction thing to read about was wildlife and the earth. My parents were thrilled that I had taken such a shine to reading at such a young age. One day, I was outside helping my dad in the garden. My mom had just changed Ernesto's billionth dirty diaper and now led her out to toddle over to us to help. I didn't think that she would be very helpful because when Ernesto was outside helping us, all she did was put things in her mouth. She seemed to like to put dirt in her mouth. I didn't see that as very helpful, but that was just my opinion. Daddy and I were weeding and picking tomatoes and herbs. It was a perfect day to spend gardening with my dad. The sun was bright in the sky, there were no clouds, and there was a soft light breeze. My little garden basket already was full of tomatoes, mint, and basil. I continued helping Daddy weed, even though I thought the garden looked good. Ernesto toddled on over, plopped down on her cushy new diaper, and began to pick up leaves and dirt and put it in her mouth. She seemed content, and I had learned long ago not to try to stop her. I figured it was her business what she put in her mouth, even if I did think that it was gross and made no sense. Yes, son, Daddy called to me. Check this out. I walked over and saw that Dad had a good-sized caterpillar in his hand. It's a caterpillar, I said, stating the obvious. Yay, Dad said, but I wonder what kind it is. This sounded like an excellent opportunity to grab a book. In my little library, I had old field guides of books that my dad had given to me. Including in that collection was a guide to insects that lived in our area. I ran inside and grabbed the book and looked up the caterpillar. It was a monarch. How exciting! Monarchs were becoming endangered. I ran outside to tell Dad. It's a monarch butterfly caterpillar, I told Daddy. I showed the picture to Ernesto, who was still eating dirt or leaves or whatever. I wondered if that was why she always had those nasty diapers. Great job, Dad said. How did you know that? I used the bug book, I said, showing him the book. Dad is my little nerdy genius, Daddy said laughing. They are becoming endangered, I told Dad. And we should probably keep this one safe, he said. Dad and I used an old fish bowl and put some sticks and leaves in it for the caterpillar to climb around on. According to my book, I learned that monarch caterpillars only fed on milkweeds. Dad took Ernesto and me into the field to find some milkweed leaves, which we put in the fish bowl with the caterpillar. I found a little notebook to use as a butterfly diary. Every day, I checked on the caterpillar and documented my findings. Day 1. Caterpillar is eating milkweed. Ernesto is not interested in it. Day 2. Added more leaves. Missed it with a squirt bottle. Caterpillar is eating well. Day 3. Caterpillar growing fatter. Increasing leaves. Ernesto still doesn't care about it. Day 7. Caterpillar shed skin again. Added more leaves. I shared my diary with my friends Alex and Tay, who lived nearby. They also contributed to the feeding of the caterpillar. We also researched where monarchs lived 
and what we could do to help them become less endangered. Daddy let us plant milkweeds around the garden and in our front yard. We also planted milkweeds in Alex and Tay's yard. We planted milkweeds by Alex's swimming pool. One of Alex's cousins, Veronica, came over. She was older, seemed very interested in grooming herself. Veronica constantly was putting on lipstick and fixing her hair. She didn't seem happy in the country. She laughed when we invited her to join Operation Monarch and told us that she didn't want to join in our nerd herd. That didn't bother me. My dad used the word as a compliment. He was proud that I was his little nerdy genius. Alex, Tay, and I just kept working on our mission. After about two weeks, we noticed that the caterpillar had turned into a beautiful gold and blue cocoon. It looked like a tiny piece of pottery. For the next ten days, Operation Monarch checked on the cocoon, excitedly waiting for it to hatch. Finally, on the tenth day, there in the aquarium, we saw the most beautiful butterfly I had ever seen up to that point. We spent the whole morning watching our butterfly unfold and then stretch its wings. Even Ernesto was interested in it. We all carried the butterfly to the part of the garden with the most milkweed and let it sit on a flower. Then we watched it flutter around. We had done it. We had saved a nearly endangered species. As an older kid and then as an adult, I look back on the experience fondly. I remembered how none of us cared that Veronica had called us a nerd herd. I didn't know it at the time, but I learned a lesson during that time. It doesn't matter what anyone says or what they call you. If you are happy with what you are doing, that is all that matters. Little kids live their lives that way until they reach the inevitable time when they start to conform to the ideas and whims of others. As an adult, I make it a point to revisit that period and remember that child's lesson, and I am a happier adult for it. Hey, thank you for watching. Please click on the right to subscribe if you like the video. And please don't forget to click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Watch more videos on the left, including our playlist. Thank you.